Hey guys, Leaflet here with another video for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. And this video is about endgame builds, realistic endgame builds for people that aren't cheating. Uh, if you want to know what's realistic, what you should have towards the endgame, this is the video for you. So first off, I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of information I'm going to have to tell you about the different sigils in the game. So one of the most important things is that orange slots, there's different colors of slots. So here, as you can see, there's like gray slots, there's pink slots, blue slots, purple slots, orange slots. And orange slots are the most important slots because orange slots equal damage. And so like when we're talking about endgame builds, we're already going to assume that you have a terminus weapon. Uh, you don't have to have it full max awakening to use these builds. But again, it, it, it really does help. And, you know, we're assuming endgame terminus weapons. The realistic optimal setup is you're going to want to have. So we're going to go ahead and build it right now on this uh, Naru right here. I have no sigils on. You're going to want to put on your character awakening. So this is going to depend on the character. They're all going to be really different. So for for Naru, her abilities are good, so we're going to go ahead and grab the Awakening. So your character sigils come in a couple flavors. There are the standalone sigils, which are the ones that you can purchase from Zero Cart, and those are just individual ones. There's one that you can get through Dahlia badges and one that you can get through Treasure Trade. Otherwise, you're going to be getting these sigils from Trans Marvels, and there are different flavors of them. You can get a plus, which has another substat, or you can get what is called the Awakening, which has both of them on a, on a single single sigil. Over here, we're probably going to run Naru's, uh, which would be Butterfly's Awakening. We're going to go ahead and run that. It's actually not actually the full ideal would be two plus of the skills, but with an orange substat. You can actually get it with damage cap, which is incredibly valuable. Again, it's going to limit like your use on other characters because you can only use these sigils on one character, which is the character that they're intended for. So we're going to go ahead and grab Butterfly's Awakening right here, which has both of her skills. And that'll be like our first thing. Uh, and again, this is going to depend on your character. If the sigils aren't good for your character or good for how you're building the character, then you can only get the ones that you need. Uh, for a lot of characters, the Awakening is really, really good. So this is going to be your basic setup here. You're going to need that, and then you're going to need your damage caps. And unfortunately, I mean, this is just how the game is. Damage cap is just so much better. There are a couple of edge cases where you wouldn't have to run damage cap in general, unless you're specifically building for something, you want to run damage cap. So we're going to run our damage caps. Ideally, you're going to watch damage cap 15s. So damage cap caps out at 65. So if you're running the terminus weapon fully awakened, you're going to have that plus five damage cap increase right there, right next to catastrophe and regen. And that is going to take you to the maximum, which is 65 with only four sigils at level 15. So we'll go ahead and add those right now. You can kind of, uh, and ideally you want ones with a modifier and damage cap, as you can see, damage cap five plus is actually not super rare. So you can actually get them. Potion hoarder is a really good choice. I like nimble onslaught, improved dodge. So we're just going to go ahead and run these, these four right here. And again, so it's 15 levels. And if you look over here at the traits, if you come over here and look at the traits, you can see that it does max out at 65. So you're going to have your 60 plus and then your five from your weapon. After that, supplementary damage. So what supplementary damage does is it has a percent chance to add a 20% damage echo to your attack, which uh, think of it as a double strike. It's it, it's another attack. It's additional damage that you can have over the damage cap. The number for the supplementary damage is actually affected by damage cap itself. But again, it is, an, it is another attack. It counts as another attack. So it has its own damage cap. So you're going to want your supplementary damages. Supplementary damage is level 40 five max so you're going to want to have three level fives this is kind of where it gets rough because supplementary damage five plus does exist but it's incredibly rare it's so rare that if you get it it's more of a bonus i wouldn't be saying that you need it statistically not probable that you would have three supplementary damage five pluses so we're just going to go with that and then you're going to have your war elemental which war elemental it gives you elemental advantage for every attack including attacks that aren't on elements so for example eo has fire damage ice damage despite being a light element will turn all of that into elemental bonus so that is another type of damage that does uh, go over the damage cap so that's why war elemental is so strong so this is going to be your basic setup here which again leaves you for really only three slots and again that's kind of how the game is it's really nothing you can do about it so further on you're going to need crit because you're going to want to have a high amount of crit how are we going to going to get our crit here you're going to need the, and this is unfortunately optimal again you're going to want a weapon stone uh, a vitality weapon 
gemstone, which gives you crit. And you're going to want a 10. Luckily, they're not that rare. If you're transmarveling a lot, you will get uh, critical 10 uh, weapon stones. And whatever stats you get on it can be, it could be whatever stat you want. You know, ideally, you get something good on there. We have, we do have our weapon stone, which is taking us to 84 crit. One of the important things to get is the crit, crit weapon mastery here. So for, as you see, my Naru is not fully built out because it's so expensive to level up people. You're going to want to have, this is one of the most important nodes, which is your crit weapon second mastery, which is critical hit rate up. That's going to give you just a 5%. And that's like with all the weapons that you have. You don't have to have this weapon equipped to have this 5%. So we have that. We've got our 10 from our weapon stone. And ideally, you have done your over masteries. Here on your over masteries, hopefully you do have that critical hit rate 20%. You want to aim for that. So uh, that's probably the most important stat is you want for your over masteries, you want 20 critical hit. And that's going to be able to get you into a good crit range with only one crit sigil. Other other good things that you want in your over masteries are uh, you want the critical hit 20 which is the most important. Um, and you also want normal attack damage cap. Those are the two most important. Third most important would be your skill damage cap up. And then for your four slots, a little flex, you can you can maybe have SBA damage up, which uh, honestly, this is a pretty good roll on Naru, not gonna lie. Uh, SBA up is really, really good there. And so as you can see, because I have the I have the weapon with the 10 crit sigil, I've got the five from my masteries, and then I've got 20% from my over masteries. That's going to get me within only one sigil level 15 should get me pretty close to max on crit so we'll go ahead and run crit luckily i do have a crit stamina which is uh really ideal you really want that crit with an orange sigil ideally stamina is pretty great so we'll just have that there and that's gonna put us at 99 crit it is off by one but it's not worth an another sigil for a one percent chance so that leaves us with what two more and you're gonna need more damage mods right so in order to like really hit cap you're gonna need at least two damage mo two good damage mods um if you're running so stamina is really good tyranny is really good uh, life on the line i really like life on the line because it's free life on the line makes it so you can't get healed but it is a big mod so as you can see we could check on some of these mods here stamina is going to boost attack by 50 percent when i'm at 100 hp so if you're really good at dodging you're really good at not getting hit you you're going to want to pot every time you do get hits that you actually have that 50 percent increase still uh life on the line is going to give you 35 percent, but then your allies can't heal you which is not really a big deal because you're going to run potion harder anyway so not really a huge deal you can also run if you really want you can run tyranny tyranny is going to give you 35 percent, but it doesn't have any of the issues uh like stamina doesn't you don't have to be 100 and you don't need you can be healed by allies 20 percent max hp that's taking you honestly into like getting one shotted that's why a lot of people really love tyranny but like I, I i'm not like i like the other ones more personally and uh so that really only leaves you with one slot unfortunately and uh one thing about these damage modifiers so when they say you have a damage modifier I mean, stamina, tyranny, life on the line. The way that they work is they actually have diminishing returns. So if you look at the levels, uh, let's just take a look at, let's look at like tyranny, for example, right? Let's take a look at it. So on tyranny, you can see that the increase is actually higher the lower the level is. So you can see you're getting from level one to level two, it's like a 3% increase. But as you start to get up here in levels, you can see that like, uh, 29 to 30, level 29 to 30 is only a 1% increase. So because of that, you want to really maximize your levels by spreading out the types of mods that you have. So again, we're going to run stamina here. You're going to run stamina here and you want to run something else other than the stamina. So, uh, you know, I've got, I've got the stamina, stamina on this one. I'm going to want to run a different mod for my second one. So we're going to run life on the line as my second slot. And if you run a third slot, you're going to want something else like maybe tyranny, concentrated fire. If you're playing range, ranged character, you don't really want to stack the same damage mods and again that's because of the diminishing returns there is one exception and that is attack in which attack power is actually better the more levels you have in it it's it's a little backwards you know we're not really usually running attack so we're just gonna go with this and that really only leaves you with one slot left unfortunately so you can also run a uh, critical damage is another really good one you can run maybe one damage mod and critical damage because critical damage does have a pretty decent modifier and if you're going to have 99% crit anyway it is essentially just 100% you're going to be dealing more damage and a uh, critical critical mod is pretty pretty big critical hit damage I mean you're, you're, you're looking at 35% so um, it, it, it could be a pretty good one to have but we're going to stick with life on the line here because I have it leveled and if you need to level your sigils again slimes are a good way to do that you can get azurites from them which just levels your sigils to 15 immediately um, what you can run here in your free slot is whatever you want that helps your character so like say like 
your character has really big big damage caps you need like a little bit more damage cap you, uh, you can run you can run more damage here uh another damage sigil and this is really like a your only flex slot so if you want to run something defensive like you want to run you know an improved dodge quick charge uh quick charge is a is a pretty good one if you're playing a charge character you want to run like combo booster you want to run combo booster you want to run something like you know nimble onslaught improved dodge potion harder this is your only slot here that you can really free up to put whatever you want so how do you further your build what can you do after you have this after you have this build from here on out it's really just getting more variety in damage cap five pluses more variety in like your critical hit rates and your different damage mods so that you can kind of shift things towards the characters that you want to so say like i'm playing eo i want a little bit more quick charge i can pull out more quick charge sigils that still fulfill what i need so like maybe i'll have a crit quick charge right that i could put in there or maybe here i can have i can have quick charge um you know quick charge with some quick cooldown something like that and maybe i'll run another quick charge here because quick charge is only it is less of a damage mod than life on the line so maybe i'll run two it really depends on what you start to get towards the end and any supplement mental damage five plus that you get is basically a bonus so you almost always want to run it if you get a supplementary damage five plus you're going to want to run that uh, other other honorable mentions for this last slot uh glass cannon is pretty good uh if you're confident in your ability to defend that will help you out a lot uh, oh one more thing so I mentioned earlier having, for ex for instance, on Naru having both of your character abilities on separate sigils could be optimal, and that's only when they have an orange stat. So for instance, if you had Butterfly's Grace with a uh, damage cap, and then you had Butterfly's Grace with stamina, uh, that could be ideal, or crit, that could be ideal, because sigil skills cannot be the same color, with the exception of the Awakening sigil, which has two purples. They cannot be the same color, so they'll always be like purple, 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 orange. And here we have like orange, pink, orange, blue. But orange, since orange is your damage specific color, that's why it's really, really good on, on purple because you have an additional spot to have an orange skill on it. So that's why that can be ideal. For instance, uh, let's say in the best case scenario, you have butterflies, grace, damage cap, butterflies, valor, damage cap. That's two orange slots. So you actually can run other orange slots instead of these damage caps, which means that you you essentially have more oranges on your grid than normal. That's basically a, a run through for end game builds, a, a very reasonable end game build that uh, realistic optimal setup, non cheated. Because yeah, it, getting supplemental damage five is incredibly rare. So luckily, war elemental aren't that rare i know they seem to be pretty rare but you will get them the odds on them aren't like incredibly bad uh and neither are they on supplemental damage five so again if you're not if you're not at this point yet in the game you can check out our other guide on how to do a uh, progression build again this is for end game builds so anyway i hope this helps uh with your end game builds and uh Again, I'm Leaflet. I stream on Twitch. I stream a lot of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and I'm uploading guides every day. If you want to check me out on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash leaflet. And I'd really appreciate if you gave the video a like and a comment. Helps so much with the algorithm, guys. And uh, I hope to make more content soon, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.